Retro here. This is an update on my uh, crucible design for vaporizing iron for the magnetic cast for the EPG. Now, you've seen my MOT video before. It's just to, um, to provide the current to melt the metal with. This is a, a crucible here which I've made just out of refractory material. That's the phosphate bonded refractory material that I'm using there. Um, what I've done to make the crucible is I've got a carbon crucible. So I've, I've taken a silicon mould of the crucible, it's just a, a mould on the inside and then the outside, so after I remove the crucible I've got a, um, a mould of what the crucible shape is like and through the top hole there I can pour the refractory material in and after it hardens I'll remove it and um, I've just cut the length down a bit so it's a shallower crucible and I've drilled two holes in it for my tungsten electrodes. I've also just reinforced it a little bit on the bottom to hold the electrodes in. Um, a little bit more on that now. What I'm using is 4mm four, four thoriated tungsten electrodes. I've cut them to size. And for the connectors, what I've done is I've got some um, stainless steel tube. I've cut a certain length of it. Uh, ground out the inside so it's nice and clean for a, a positive contact and uh, I've also cut a slit along it to facilitate the, um, the friction fit. Now, after I determine the length and everything like that, just at the moment, this... It's, it's quite, quite a loose fit, but all I have to do is um, crimp it together a little bit and it'll end up being quite a solid fit like, like this side is here. So, with that I can also push the electrodes through the crucible to whatever height I want. You can see there. See if I can reduce that height there. Because I don't want too much of the, the uh, electrode sticking out of the crucible, just enough to make contact with the iron, otherwise I run the risk of melting the electrode. If the electrode's held in by the refractory material, it'll act as a heat sink and the electrode should stay well, shouldn't melt compared to the, the iron around it because uh, the iron vaporises or boils at uh, about 2800 degrees or so, Celsius that is. So, yeah, through the heatsink effect, I'll be able to keep my electrode solid. This is just a plaster stand I've made to keep the crucible upright while I'm melting it. So, after I finish the electrodes and insert them on each side, uh, when Hang on a sec, I'll, I'll try to do it now. You can see there, all I have to do is drop a piece of iron in there and it should make contact between the two electrodes and that'll start the boiling process. Once the, the, the iron is melted into a ball, it should maintain contact with the electrodes at the bottom of the crucible, increasing the heat and allowing it to vaporise. What I plan on doing is having like a board. I'll be taking this to the electrical shop uh, next week to get some proper lugs properly crimped onto that because I don't have any crimping devices this big. So you'll have one on each side effectively. Making contact with um, this electrode and that electrode. The purpose of these friction fit cuffs is so I can weld the lug onto the pipe there that'll maintain a, a solid contact because you, you don't want a thin connection there, you want a thick one otherwise it'll blow this out before you vaporise enough metal there. Now once the metal's vaporised, I've got a bell jar here which I've cut a hole in the top and to fit a piece of tube into it. I can also have an inlet on the bottom on the board that I was talking about making with some argon gas being introduced a, to keep the oxide down, and uh, B, to hopefully covalently bond it with the metal vapour that I'm making. And through that, I'll be able to evacuate it into the EPG chamber through that tube on the top. Now, hopefully, that should all work. So, anyway, uh, stay tuned, post your comments, and uh, I'll post the next, next video soon. Bye.